Hey there, everybody. We are back around the table again here for another episode. Tonight we have a fill-in of Morgan again. Hello, once more. Yep, Joseph's out of town, so we called upon him. The favorite fifth quarter they have. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, we'll kick it off with what everyone is carrying, and see how you're still the newbie at the table. Stretch two, half 40, spider coat. Nice. I... I think I'm the only person in the entire world who likes that orange. Like, do. Call me crazy. I was about to say, you need to right dye that stuff. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the burnt orange that they did. I like it because it's a non-electric safety orange. I like their safety orange, though. That's the thing. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. dislike it, but it's just different, and I, I'm pretty okay with that. How have you been enjoying the Hat 40? Love it. Yeah? Love it. Thanks. I haven't been using this a lot. I Honestly, I've been doing a lot of carrying the... Uh, 940, the Rask, and the Shiro. So that doesn't get a huge amount of pocket time, but it's done super well. Like, anytime I carry it and I cut through cardboard, it's just, oh, hey, look, some butter. Excellent. Alrighty. Which direction are we going? Well, that direction. <laughs> you heard Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Luna's complaining. She's my cat, so it's, I'm going to take the heat. It's all you? Uh, I'm throwing the M390 grip up. Uh, nice. One of the reasons is Joe actually got me a new carbon mm. fiber clip for That's it. That's pretty. <laughs> yeah, so on top of the brass and the fancy steel, yeah. we get ourselves... Oh, let's get some focus. Come on. Uh, don't focus. you focus. Someone stick their hand in there. Right in here. Yeah. yeah there we go. Uh, yeah, we get the carbon fiber clip. So it's... I'm trying to note. I'm calling it the tuxedo edition. Um... <laughs> It was hold. pretty good. It's a little rough on the edges, but it was a fairly inexpensive clip. So it's, but it was something I'm trying out, and I seem to like it. So yeah. And tonight, I am carrying my zero tolerance 456. Understandably. Yeah, it's one of my favorite knives and one of my favorites to carry for sure. And yours is 20 CV, right? Yep. Yeah. Our target. I saw I saw a post the other day that was someone had 204P. And I couldn't remember them actually okay. doing one in 204P. But either way. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Maybe it was a sprint or something. <clears throat> Maybe. What'd you and, say? Uh, last week, you made a joke about Joe having a Tenacious instead of having his Sebenza. Mm -hmm. And he's not here this week. But <laughs> yeah. so this week, I actually brought his Resilience. Very cool. Then I polished it. <laughs> in honor of Joe. Yeah. And you did do the polish on it. I have actually. I haven't actually seen this in person yet, so very nice, very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, high yeah. polish right in there. That's yeah. It uh, mm -hmm. when I was polishing it out, I it kind of rolled and it cut through to the next layer. Mm -hmm. The alcohol did is just flat polish the G10 just to smooth out the texture and give it a really nice shine to it. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, yeah. And Joe, Joe's probably carrying six things right now, but he's not here, so... Yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what he's carrying. And one of them's probably the Sebenza. Yeah, that is pretty really? cool. All right, why are we here tonight, guys? We are here tonight because of these. We are talking <laughs> CRKTs. There are only three, so I didn't get to put one up. Yeah. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> so, yeah, and specifically, we are talking about the... Home front, starting it all with the field strip technology, which is really cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, we wanted to hit on this because it's <laughs> it's not someone something anyone else is doing. It's Ken Onion's baby. His baby was mm -hmm. the home front. Well, um, we don't have the aluminum version, which is probably the one that started out, and then they come up with the the poly one yeah. afterwards. But since then, it's blown up to be an entire entire product line for CRKT mm -hmm. now, to the point where you've got other designers coming in. Yeah, and they started out in uh, 2016 with Ken Ningen's original home front design. Um, this was actually, the home front model was based off of a custom that Ken did himself called, the. it was just called the Military Flipper, and he did like five or six different sizes. I've got a really nice picture that I'll put in right there. And surprisingly enough, um, even though it took 10 years for him to develop the home front technology and how it works efficiently, I haven't been able to find a custom version, hmm. even in the military 
so record that he made. To our knowledge, the only time it's been employed is through CRKT, CRKT yeah. not through his custom stuff, yeah. which is also pretty interesting. Yeah, That it so. is. And yeah, since the 2016 birthing of this design and this technology, um, as Dennis was just pointing out there, CRKT has jumped onto it using their designs or his technology design and a couple other designers' knives. So we have Mr. Jesper Vox, yep. which yep. we all are big fans of, with the H Boss. I don't know, it's the Boss. The Boss. Yeah, yeah. Um, or if it's just H Boss, but yeah. And then <coughs> Duhara. Yes. Um, with the Reikiri. Yeah, okay. right. the son of Kajihara, was it? Koji. Koji Hara. Koji Hara, which is apparently a very, very well known kitchen knife maker, I think is what he's mm -hmm. known for. Makes sense. And yeah, so his son does, and this actually made some big, big waves at this year's Shot Show for 2018. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people that were talking about that knife in particular. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so, we're going to backpedal a little bit here and show you why this stuff is so very cool. Um, as it points out there, the field strip technology. Flip the little lever, spin the little dial. Sometimes it takes a little bit. <laughs> Until you hear that click, oh, sure. and then there you go. The knife is disassembled for ease of cleaning, maintenance, stuff like that. Even sharpening, like yeah. <laughs> if you want to take the blade off, yeah, if you want to use one like or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, why Canyon first kind of started out with this design and this idea was for military in the field for ease of clean and stuff like that was his int original intention. I nicked you. Thank you. Oh, you did actually get me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. One All more right. Cutter. <laughs> that's that's cute. <laughs> 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 now, when you disassembled it, on yep. some I've seen, and this might be a QC issue, this might mm -hmm. just be, they changed it somewhere along the way, but these Teflon washers were pretty much built into the handles. Yeah, it does seem like with the, um, the polymer handled ones they are, but with the aluminum handled ones they are not. Okay. Is that what the difference is? Yes, okay. yes. So with the, or at least oh. on the one side it is, I have had this one pop off on me before, but it's seated very nicely now. Okay, don't, well, yeah. don't press it, obviously. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was but, just trying yeah. to see if I could jiggle it off. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so pretty solid for the most part. So maybe it is just a QC thing where every once in a while you have one that's not seated properly and it will yeah. come off. They might cut that hole slightly bigger or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? One ten, and that was one of my concerns with the field strip. Is those washers better be pretty solidly built into the handles? Because that's just two other fiddly pieces. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you're just dunking this under a tap and drying it off, you don't want to worry about losing track of your washers. Well, yeah. CRKT has promo pictures in rivers and creeks. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Is uh, presumably if it is like a military personnel there yeah. out in the field, they've got like a puddle to clean it in, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah like. The cleanest of the puddles around Indeed. you. Nothing to see there. So yeah, the washers is one of my major concerns with these things, and I have seen some of them where all of a sudden they have peeled off and things like that, right? So there is a concern for that. Um, other than that, my other big concern would be the the one screw in theory holding the knife together other than the pivot itself, right? Mm -hmm. The pivot and the back screw, but other than that, that's the only thing holding these. There's a lot of custom makers, though, that are doing, like, just two. Like, they'll do a pivot-sized screw in the back and then just do two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I get that. But I also understand their construction and what you're paying for custom knife makers. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah compare I, I will give you that. I'm just saying. And yeah, in theory, that is fine. That's it. Now, the execution of it concerns me a little bit with the CRKT ones. So although military use and blah, 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 I think I would lean towards aluminum handled ones for mm -hmm. heavier duty use. And probably the, the Zytel or the G10 or whatever so they are. nice. 
for lighter use. Well, and again, this one's nice, but the H boss with the slicing edge that it has, yeah. it's not going to be a heavy duty use knife no. anyway. No, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't like that right. knife better in an aluminum handle, but. <laughs> It's so nice that I kind of want it. One other thing about the dial that I'm wondering about, I doubt it'll be a big deal, but how easy is it to clean that part out? Because you might end up with a super gritty action um, if it does get done too much. Or can you take it out? Yeah, um, the little attachment that they have on the pin there, I can't remember the name oh, of the them. C-clip. Yes, C-clip. So you, you can pop that off, so it is presumable that you would be able to uh, take the dial off. To if you need to do further maintenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that would just be more regular maintenance and keeping it to the point where yeah. it doesn't build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be like That would have been my question. Theory. Did they think about that? And again, yeah. being as easy as it is to disassemble and reassemble, a little maintenance in here is an easy thing to have happen. Right? Exactly. So yeah, you, sure. you um, compare that to uh, it's, it's it's an like, access lock, and this is yeah. a five-minute job versus a. It's like field stripping a gun versus like doing a full strip down to yeah. every single part. <laughs> now putting it back together, one of the things I've noticed for myself, Luna's saying hi. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Luna? <laughs> um. I've noticed, and I've seen them put it together usually the opposite way, but I've personally noticed that if I spin the wheel first to tighten the backside up and then switch the dial over, it usually locks up. Oh, and it's being a little fiddly right now. There we go. Locks up pretty solid. Um, I found trying to do it the other way. For some reason, this is on an angle or something because this bar is holding it up. (laughs) Yeah, I I do find doing the dial first on the aluminum ones helps out um, because of the flex of the material of the yeah. other guys you can get away with it a little bit but usually the main key is being able to pinch in and hold the pivot in as you're doing the dial that way you keep it seated where it should be yeah that's the one problem is that people will let go of that yeah and as soon as you let go of it you're screwed yeah and the one thing that i am very impressed with these guys for how easy they are to take apart in the quickness <clears throat> assembly and stuff like that. The centering. And Every single time. Yeah, the smoothness of action with them. It's wonderful. And pretty consistently, too. Yeah. Like, this one throws me off a little bit when I look at it. I don't think it's 100% centered, but I also think my eyes are playing tricks on me for where the liner lock is. Mm. And you're seeing the subframe lock, but I don't think the h boss is 100% centered on this mod. But it consistently goes back to the same centering, even and, though it's not perfectly yeah, not centered. Quite, no. no, and yeah. it's uh, again, I can't talk. Uh, I can't talk <laughs> about centering on that. But that's that's a different thing. Yeah. Um, I think this one may be similarly barely off, but possibly just optical illusioning may have it. Yeah. And the other thing with these very very small Teflon washers, I also have to comment on smooth. Yeah. Yes. So that, that was the smooth. first thing that struck me about these. How, How smooth, smooth mm-hmm. they're doing for these jobs. Yeah. Compared to bronze phosphor and things like that. And yeah. <sighs> Spiderco clippers. Honestly, it's uh, a lot of them need some healthy maintenance to get them to the point where they're as yeah. smooth as a CRKT with these yeah. itty bitty Teflon. I gotta say, as far as flippers go, it's zero tolerance and CRKT are the ones killing it. And as I just disassembled it there, yeah, there, there goes Teflon the Teflon washer. Ah. It stuck to the blade as I was disassembling so, it. So when I put it back together and popped it off, all of a sudden, so... Yeah, and it's just off of the uh, side that has the pivot through it. The side that has the open hole still is actually seated, and you can see it, see the depth of it through the hole. It looks like yes. it's a thicker washer on that yeah. side. So, uh, yeah, with the aluminum handles, like you were saying, but mm. that is some concern about... Um, Potentially losing it. Carefree, yeah. plunging it into a river, cleaning it off. It might not be quite as step-by-step step as they're yeah, making it out to be. I honestly only noticed it when I slid the blade there and it kind of stuck to the mat there and I saw it underneath the blade. That's yeah. why I noticed it came out. Yeah. yeah. So if you buy one... Pay attention to that, for sure. So yeah, I uh, actually took it apart there for a second just to kind of showcase the internals of it some again there. Um, internal stop pin. Yes. Uh, so Again, suspended in here. So it, I don't see a screw on this side. So I, molded in them. I, I imagine... Friction fit? 
Mm -hmm. Probably. That there's some sort of plate that they pass the aluminum over top of to hold it in place. Like, I'm, again, I'm not sure exactly what's yeah. holding that stop pin in place. And the other thing I noticed was the stop pin in the center, like, rather than a stop pin being on the spine of the knife where you normally see it, they mm -hmm. actually made the stop oh, pin in front of where the pivot point is, right? Um, in theory, I'm okay with this. It, it, it probably increases piercing power, the pokey factor. Yep. Is, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, um, with the pivot because it's lined up. But it is yeah. lined up, so it's going to, yeah, yeah. You hush up. You love it. We're all even now yeah. for bad yeah. puns tonight. <laughs> no, but I, I integrate, yeah, because it's easy. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I believe all of them have that similar stop hit. Yeah, yeah, they are all designed in the same sort of way with that. So, um, one of the things that I was going to dabble on is uh, steel choices mm -hmm. for all of them. Um, they're using 1.4116. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing as just 4116. Uh, Croup Steel, you hear it called a whole bunch of things. I don't think there's much, if any, variation between the one in front or not. Not to my knowledge. Um, yeah. and, and a good healthy steel, like uh, Cold Steel started to use it in some of their budget stuff, the Working mm -hmm. Man's, the things like that, the Steve Austin series, the Pro yeah. Lights, the, yeah. A bunch of their light series for their fixed blades. Yeah, yeah. which is awesome in a budget series. Mm -hmm. But that's where I have to comment on some of the CRKT stuff and, and the steel that they're using. Well, first of all, crew, share with the group, what do you guys think? Experiences, any experiences? No real experience. Um, I've not heard the most positive things about it. Mm -hmm. I've heard that it's not terrible, but it's not... It's just kind of a generic, very basic, beat-up workhorse sort of a knife. I easy might to just sharpen. be snobby. That might be... Might be part of the issue, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've had no experience, and I've heard very little about it, to be honest. I think it may be that same snobby factor. The title of a future episode. Uh, yeah, <laughs> snobby factor for sure. Yeah. Um, I've got some Cold Steel stuff, the Spike series, the Outdoor Mismen lights, the things like that that do have the Krupp Steel in them, um, as well as those Kai kitchen knives <laughs> that, that have, have Krupp Steel. Um, and it's decent, and in my mind, I've always related it to an AUS-6. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as it was, right? But um, one of the things that I just learned yesterday, um, Cedric and Ada put up uh, a, an ABC of knife steels. Okay, cool. And he did 4116 crew. And because he's, over the last couple of years, done these crazy to-the-max angles and testings and things like mm -hmm. that, he was actually commenting that, that 4116 croup is still very, very stable at a very, very thin angle. Okay. Which, when I look at these designs, I mean, two, definitely, very much so, a little bit of a slicey because of how big it is. And the mm -hmm. home front, a little wedgier, but even still. And the home front is croup steel. I thought it was ACR, but it's not. It is actually 4116 as well. So even the aluminum one? Uh, no, the aluminum is Oz 8. Okay. For way too much money, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> way too much money. Suggested retail of one forty nine. That may be a recurring this is theme. Too much money. And that was, I was going to get into that with the yeah. steels as well, for sure. But the thinner angle, yeah. being uh, like double your cutting abilities. So maybe beefier angle because of harder use. But if you're planning on using anything like this for just day to day daily cutting tasks, blocks and stuff like that. This is a hugely thin angle as it is. If you mm -hmm. thinned out the bevel to an even thinner angle, apparently on croup steel, you can get performances into the VG10 really? markers, is what he was showing. So okay. props to Cedric to doing all this homework so I can <laughs> cheat and use it on our <laughs> channel. Yeah. But I watched that video and Good I am, work. he said, I don't know if anyone will watch this because I think people will because they're nerds like me. And I watched it from A to Z because <laughs> I'm a nerd like you, dude. Yeah, so, I haven't watched it yet, but it's in the, uh, yeah. in the list. Yeah, it's in the queue. For, so I, I get a little more maybe testing meeting. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a steel that I prefer in a kitchen knife. As opposed to my pocket, mm -hmm. I think I think you're onto something there. With really? the high care kitchenware yeah, and stuff like, like that. VG10 is a perfectly serviceable steel, 
but I prefer it in my um, shuns in the kitchen as opposed to my delicate. Fair enough. Yeah. And if you have <laughs> fancy delicates to play with and sprint runs, exactly. they seem to be doing a consistent new experimental steel. It's it? common to hear that people like the sprint run delicates and enduras more than the Right. And you're seeing them pop up more yeah, and more and absolutely. more over the last two, three, four years type of. Yeah. But I can only imagine with this and with VG10, it takes nothing at all to sharpen. And it takes mm-hmm. an absolute, like VG10 anyways, takes an absolute razor sharp edge. Indeed. Really, really nice and fine, right? So if this can take an edge similar to that. Yeah. And again, nothing to sneeze up for CRKT, but I am reading Rockwell of 55 to 57. Which is, uh, again, nothing to sneeze at yeah. for what they're doing. I've seen some questionable heat treatments from CRKT, so 55 to 57 is something I, I, can, well, same I same. can swallow that pill yeah. yeah. for sure for Krups too. So, again, like literally up until yesterday, totally going to be snobby about <laughs> the price points and the Krups steals and the blah, blah, blah. But then watching this, hey, all of a sudden I'm getting into VG10 cuts maybe the price point is slightly more justifiable, if not with a factory edge with some it's, modification. It's right? still a little high, even with that, but better. <laughs> yeah. Better than we were thinking. Molded injected plastic with a spinny wheel and a dial on the front doesn't give you Canadian retail of 110, and I love this design. I want this design in my life. We all I can't don't. imagine that getting the sole ownership or usership of this uh, technology comes cheap. Yeah, I would ex- no, it's... expect it to be expensive. Mm-hmm. Like we've kind of joked around in previous episodes how Benchmade stuff has that butterfly tax. Um, with CRKT, I find that you're paying a designer tax, and especially mm-hmm. with the ones with the field strip technology, you're paying for that technology. Sure. You're, you're, paying a can, then, you're paying a Ken Onion tax. Yeah, you're paying Ken yeah. Onion, but you're also paying Vox mm-hmm. or who else? And yeah. Duhara, and yes. then, yeah. And then you might double pay Ken just mm-hmm. because... Well, that's Ken. <laughs> but talk about the steel at 55 to 57 Rockwell. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you use it all day. By the time you get home, it might be a little bit dull. Strop it, and it's probably mm-hmm. only rolled over because it's fairly soft. Yeah. You bring it back out true, and you're good to go again. Yeah. And I'd like to see a versus, and uh, mm-hmm. maybe we'll even play with it a little bit because we do have experience with uh, 12C27. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe doing some little bit of centric and eight or cut to the max between yeah, yeah. 1227 and, uh, really like 12, 27. and 4116 mm-hmm. croup reprofile to a 17, to a 15, to a. I wouldn't mind playing that game, actually, yeah, yeah. to tell you the truth. Uh, doing cardboard cuts and using consistent whatever type of thing. Some sort of consistent medium, because I agree with that standard that he's got as well, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Croup steel, 4116, uh, apparently. Yeah. Might not be bad, but the one thing I do have to comment on is is stepping up their steel game, mm-hmm. and and I have to comment on CRKT stepping up their steel game. The home front with Krupp Steel, uh, hundred ish point price point Canadian, uh, American, it's seventy five. I don't know something like that type of thing, eighty nine something like that. Um, aluminum handled version with the AUS eight, and their suggested retail is one forty nine ninety nine. That's insane. For a US-8 steel. It's a hard pill to swallow. That's buying a US Sprint Run Delicate, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, and and with the steel upgrades and the price points in mind, I will move stuff wherever I want and tap <laughs> it a little bit at the That's same time, too. It's so up. It's so uh, All right. So you nerd up. <laughs> um, I have to compare Cold Steel with stepping up their game. They yeah. were a US-8 yeah. for years and years and years and years, and they were stubborn about a US-8. And all of a sudden, they changed to XHP, and regardless of how that worked out for them, everyone cheered when they did it. Mm-hmm. And the price point was very easy to swallow, if not the same price point for an aluminum Oz 8 home front. You can now get a recon with XHP and G10. Yes. Um, and then, for whatever reason, they want to go All-American, and it's S35, and the price point bumped a little bit more, but everyone, again, praised them for S35 steals. I know there's a bunch that. of S35 mm-hmm. highlights in some boys' pockets from time to time. <laughs> yeah. I'm pointing to this guy over here. Um, it's not just me. The person that normally sits there has one, too. The the replacement Joe yeah. from Joe. Mm-hmm. I am Joseph. Myself. I have this knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, finally... They, after being stubborn about it, they finally picked up their heels and changed steel, and we would love CRKT, and not even that big mm-hmm. of a step. You're seeing companies now that are coming out of Chinese-made, coming out of Taiwanese, 
uh, D2, uh, 1428 Sandvik, 1227 Sandvik. You guys are using 1220 Sandvik in the Kit Carson Framelock M16s. Mm -hmm. Any one of these in Sandvik and I'd buy one. Yeah, instantly. And that's why yep. I want to compare this with 1227 Sandvik is because I know that's an option on the CRKT yeah. table. And I want to see how the crew maybe reprofiled to a 15 compared to a 12C27 would would compare cut to cut because yeah. of the stabilized edges and that. stuff like that, right? So, again, yeah, um, we know there's some steals on their radar. I posted Instagram today. A CRKT was a very, very rare steal. They've never really used it before. I, mm -hmm. it's Yeah, it is what it is. Um, so they will dabble with decent steals. Every once in a while. But... Uh, 4116 and 8CR, and you went from 8CR 13 to 8CR 14, so yeah. <laughs> props on you, CRKT. If you can't hear the dripping sarcasm and that applause, like, <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, anyway, yeah, so. We want to buy them. Let us buy them. It's, yeah. And really, I think we can all agree specifically that one, maybe a little bit that one, but mostly this one, it, it's just that one factor away. Price point drop, we'd all probably buy it. Yeah. Steel upgrade, we'd all probably buy it. Yeah, and that's been kind of my complaint for a long time with CRKT is I want them to hold off a year or two with the designer so we can stop paying for the designer tax and upgrade the steel a little bit. And we were talking today about them doing potentially like an upgraded line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a CRKT Elite or yeah. uh, whatever, and take some name designers, Mr. Box, Mr. Ken Onion, Mr. James Williams, like mm -hmm. Brian Ty, throw some guys up there and make some 154CM versions. Because I know yeah. you guys have that in your bag too. Yep. You make a, an auto M16, M21, it's one of the M something something. That we don't get to play with because yeah, it's we're, auto. We're Canadian, so give, I never... give me an upgraded pillar and oh, yeah. I'll, I will march out to the shop right now. I shall like the cutting edge. <laughs> Moving past our bitching and annoyance with the, the, <laughs> the steel that we're snobby over, let's get into the ergos of these guys. And I'm Winner. Gonna, well, I'm going to throw this guy back together here. And... I mean, I enjoy the whole part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. The other thing I was, I was kind of <laughs> noticing just jokingly is your, your pivots all have different designs on them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I first thought was they're almost designer specific. You've got a Ken Onion with a nice star. You've got the Dewey Hara, which Nigel will eventually get back together. With a nice, almost like God of War, yin yang yeah. symbol from the Japanese culture. And then you've got Jesper Box, which is like Johnny yeah. Cash in the crap out of his design. He's like, I, I just want it black. I just. Can you make it black for <laughs> me? That's yeah. cool. So something I just noticed kind of as we were playing with them tonight. I like that pivot though. Yeah. I, like I really like that pivot and the whole kind of design behind the the home front being base kind of World War Two sort of. It's the thing People's there. Republic of Field Strip technology. <laughs> and I can I can understand why the custom design probably did as well as it did. Mm -hmm. Because even for a flipper, and I'm a picky bastard when it comes to flippers. You sure are. The home as in you picked one flipper you like. Um, basically, more or less. <laughs> Pretty <keep> much. <laughs> that, I'm not. This D10 <laughs> is slightly inconsistent, but it's not bad. And on the aluminum handled ones, I've noticed some pretty good consistency on their detents as well. And that's the other thing we should notice with the, the field strip technology mm -hmm. is the consistency of the detents. Yeah. Being able to be twisted back together and come back to, again, that perfect spot that has that nice little backhand. I'm going to left-hand it upside down to play that. <laughs> That's so awkward looking. <laughs> Just kept. And it's anyway. doable. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, like, um, just with how you are mentioning about the, the D10 and the flippers there, like I mentioned earlier in this video, it's CRKT and ZT are, in my mind, the ones that have kind of nailed the flippers so far. Yeah. ZT's made really nice flippers. Um, yeah, shy of the like, mid-tech and custom world, it's pretty much ZT. Yeah, and I think you might be able to, and we don't have a ton of experience with it, but I can almost guarantee that you could probably put Lion Steel into that category too, yeah. for some healthy flippers. We don't get a lot of exposure what to the Lion Steel. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple out. of them that they have. And I almost oh, guarantee yeah. that they're probably on point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right there with you. <laughs> I gotta call up Spider Co a little bit and Benchmade as being as much of a yeah. fanboy of the Benchmade yeah. as I am. Benchmade flippers were this like 
brief flash in the pan. We want to play that game too, but that's that's not a, f- no. a flipper with an access lock. Doesn't I feel that good. the access flipper was not anyone's favorite knife. Though. The arcane, the arcane was a decent knife. My complaint wasn't the flipper or the access lock. My the texture. Com- my complaint yeah. on the arcane was the texture. Yep. In in fairness, I have uh, an Osborne proxy, and I like it. It, it is it is nice in the hand. Yeah. It's nice to use. That's what I was going to say. Is my yeah. favorite flipper that uh, Benchmade done has done is is the proxy, but it's not a access lock. Yeah. One. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But getting and back also on Osborne. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That too. But yeah, getting back onto why we're around around the table today here, these guys, and we were going to start getting into the ergos of them. What we liked, what we didn't like, things like that. Yeah. Type of idea, right? And we may as well start off with what we don't like is this guy. The, the hot spot. It's special. Cool yeah. looking. Oh, it's so From cool a, looking. Across the room. It, yeah. it, it, looks like, close. it looks like it was a model kit bash. Yeah. It, it looks, looks like it. a discarded attempt at a Star Wars spaceship. Can, like can I say what I called it the first time? Of course. I called it a Tokyo spaceship. Yep. <laughs> and and it just has this vibe of flying through the air, shooting laser beams, killing Klingons. <laughs> it would do fantastic and <laughs> doing all of those things. Yeah. You could fill every one of these cracks with like neon and stuff like that, and it would fit perfectly. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah for sure. <laughs> some blue lights and yeah. LEDs. Make it like one of those crazy Nerf mods. And yeah. probably some dance music in the back. <laughs> of course. Dance, dance Revolution. There's got to be some dance music. Yeah. When when the knife closed, you just hear hear that like muffled bass, and then when it's open, you actually hear the music. Now, one other thing we were going to touch on: um, right hand only pocket clip. Yeah, the yep. two lefties sitting at the table, we want to bitch slap some people about not just drilling holes on the other side of yeah. the knife. Everyone except for Vox. Yeah, apparently. Vox is going to play that game too. Yeah, yeah. With the Rakiri, it's actually machine. To be part of the design, and I just peeled part of my nail off there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, left down. It's beat up on that show now. This is the injury factor, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, it's actually uh, machined in to be part of the design and follow the curves that are in the handle there. So, they would have to also machine this side plus Cold send Steel out the second clip. Yeah, and Cold Steel does do that. And Cold Steel yeah. ships two or, clips. That's like we saw with doing. the Viper knives the other night, it still mm. just give you the option to make it slightly weird. It yeah. might not yeah. follow the design, but at the end of the day, I would prefer to have a tip up in my left hand than mm-hmm. do a flip over. Uh, and we saw that, saw it on the Viper Lily, and mm-hmm. you can tell that the curve was not there. But it, was it looked a little the, awkward for sure. It was an over the top clip, like the home front could be mm-hmm. an over the top clip, and you would just have to leave the groove on the other side. And, and hole right there. And that's yeah. all it would take. But uh, for whatever reason... Yeah, at least the Rikiri has an excuse that it's machined the one way. The home front has no excuse. They should have done that for their <clears throat> lefty carry as well. That would have been so nice. It would have been as simple as doing this. Yes, exactly. Yes, for Vox scoring points for actually getting <sighs> some empty holes over there. <laughs> So when I put a knife in my hands, this clip isn't here, which it's not terrible, especially actually on the Rakiri. Carrying it with the right clip, I know Nigel with his yeah. mitts, but I will say for myself, that right clip actually sank a second and a third finger in, as far as ergos goes. There's other hot spots on this knife yeah, okay, so oh, that are just just scary. But there to there. Yeah. This knife is so horrible for me um, with the size of my hand and fingers and stuff. I'm sitting on the corner of that angular choil that they have there. And then because of that, I'm also right on the point of the clip, right in the middle of my finger. And it is just oh, so hot spotty. See, I'm actually pistol gripping it more. So to kind of get back from that. Literally, yeah. my first finger is in that it, entire It literally choil. fits right between my fingers. <laughs> That's, That's very and funny. Not to, you know, beat a dead horse or something, but I'm not sure how well this is coming across, but that's pretty much 90 degree angle. <laughs> Hampering people, come yeah, on. Yeah, there yeah. was very what little, is this? very little breaking of the corners on this, this guy. That's why it looks cool. In, 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 in like, yeah. <laughs> in, in hand like this, the sort of like Instagram filter sort of look, it's a cool looking nut. Indeed. Here you're thinking, Oh, no, thank um, you. For me, where the liner lock 
and the bar sits in that finger, first finger choil, it just squeezes. Yeah. I just noticed a second set of jimping up here. You can yojumbo it. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, it's all about the yojumbo it. But it's a little bit big yeah. in my hand for that. It's, like, really uncomfortable. <laughs> And if you didn't know, yojimboing is a verb. You can use it. It applies to this deck. No, I'm making stuff. <laughs> oh, no. Own if it. it. If it's own not, it. own it. It's kind of comfy if I pistol grip it more, but then I feel like I'm hanging so far back. And I don't even know about the jimping on the front of that. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. So, but out there. I can I can appreciate the kitchen background, Koji Hara, his father, mm. things like that. When I when I put it into, if you don't mind. Actually, I was just about to point out that um, with the choil here, they didn't sharpen it all the way down, so you don't have a nicky factor at the back of the choil. And even with my fingers, I don't feel like I'm at risk for mm. cutting myself. And getting up onto that front choil and into that Yojimbi sort of style, that We found the one missing hotspot. Yeah, that's that's actually fairly comfy. Interesting. Maybe yeah. that's interesting. Too cold like yeah. And, yeah. and that I <laughs> always just assume sharpened choil. Oh, and it's not bad. And yeah. because yeah. of that sharpening back there, you are pretty secure in getting mm -hmm. it into it was fairly comfy like that, yeah. It is. It hangs out the back. Yeah. <laughs> way too much. But it becomes... You can't fuck with it. <laughs> it it's, it's just a good it, it hit a pommel strike while you're choking up on a knife. Like, it's, yeah. Because that's not at risk of messing up the dial at no. the back of the home front technology. The home field strip was made for the military. Yeah, that is surprisingly yes. pleasant. That was your phone. Not yeah, yeah. Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, no, I can, I can totally see that as a push cut. That, yeah. Like that, that grip is the least unpleasant of the yes. ones available. <laughs> yeah. Let me get back and with this actual finger twirl up here. But look at my knife. <laughs> I yeah, it's, it's you've got really, more handle than you have blades. But as far as the finger twirl, yeah. did you both feel safe about putting your finger oh, yeah. up there? Like it's yeah, mm -hmm. it is actually it's Big. almost excusing Sierra Kiki's loyal uh, laziness for not. Sh Finishing choils, yeah. not sharpening all the way, and making it safer for a finger choil. Yeah, so on this one, it seems kind of intentional for the finger choil aspect of that. The guy on the line is wiping his yeah, brow, saying, "Yeah, I meant to do that." <laughs> <laughs> that one sharpened all the way, as Paul just pointed out there. So that one's risky. I'm going to call out the home front really, really badly yeah. because that that's is laziness. That's clearly a sharpening choil. Yeah, clearly a sharpening choil, and there's like. What's Definitely it? over eighth of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch that could have been sharpened there as well, for sure. That, yeah, they, they, they just didn't. But back to the idea of this being a uh, uh, inspired by more kitchen eyes. It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, actually, yeah. it's actually quite easy to see how this could be sort of spiritually related to like a bunker or something. Yeah, kind of almost a... Like, uh, like exaggerated you, kind of suitcase like if you with that angle. Just expanded this out a bit more. You could imagine cutting up a cabbage with it pretty comfortably, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I can see that for sure. Now the handle is. I'm still glad that you can. Body is fucked, I'm glad that you can see that because I've never cut up a cabbage, so I can't. Mm. Well, um, there's a the Japanese actually have a specific kitchen knife, as Morgan just yep. said, the bankai. It is a cabbage knife. And if we ever Photo do a there cooking for people, factor, I have no idea what that yeah, is. Um, if, if you ever do a cooking factor, yeah. let me know, because oh, I've got will. a selection. Um, it's pretty much a kirisuke, is essentially what a bunkai looks like. Fair it's enough. very, very similar, for sure. It's like Yanagiba slicer long, but with a more reverse tattoo tip. There was a lot of words that came out of his mouth. That <laughs> probably sounded to some people like sentences. You know no, what I you know should, what he said. Should. Basically, be picture a santoku, but only angles. I was going to say it kind of looks like a Santa Fe to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that knife. All right. All right. So uh, it's one of those. And, yeah. and for that, I can appreciate the styling of it. <laughs> Most people I've talked to really enjoy the styling of it. Yeah. And that's why they own it. It's not it's going outrageous. to be like, uh, how is this a feather sticking knife? No. Where these two do start to excel on the ergos. Mm -hmm. This is um, like a pull out of your pocket and your buddy's like, what, what, are, you, what are you carrying? It's a cool what the hell show. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a fun knife. Who are you shooting your phaser at this time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have an incoming hail, Captain. Original home front, as far as ergos goes, 
he did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, aluminum does feel better. I think they did a nicer chamfering on the aluminum than they did on the poly. They did do some chamfering on the poly handles mm -hmm. on this guy. The um, simple the better a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a little bit of the jimping in of the course. liner. They could recess it a little bit more. Yeah. They, Spider Co. does a pretty good job yeah. of that. And that's actually a little bit of a fine game between having the jimping out far enough that you can purchase it to move the lock bar over and having it in enough that it's flush that you don't notice it, but then it's hard to find the lock bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like the Gale Bradleys where you have to jam yeah. your thumb in and wrench or it over. The, the worst one in my mind is the uh, Vrango. The, the uh, weird... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely... And it's a thin liner. On yeah, the and that Rango. one's hard yeah, to get. So If you're going to do that, you almost need to relieve the one scale, even a yeah. little bit, just so you can get in there. So yeah, it's definitely a fine line to play with that, so I can understand why he left it out, especially the original design of it being the military flipper, potential gloves, more heavy-duty use. Yeah, so, and, and like the same aspect as the Contigo, where it was mm -hmm. rough on the G10, but it was meant to be gloved use. Potentially yeah. the home front can be said the same thing, where it was it meant for military, mm -hmm. so potentially gloved use, where that's going to add texture. Look at that and backspacer, not, man. The yeah. back, 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 no. the backspacer says gloves to me. Yeah, yeah, if you want to actually like even zoom yeah. in on that backspacer. It's see proud of the rest of the scale. Can we get that right in there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's get. I was so close. There's the focus. Man. There we go. Yeah, it's actually pretty good on um, mm -hmm. the scent or the, and, the yeah. texture, right? Speaking of gloves, it's really easy to see how that was planned. Yeah. Uh, speaking of it, because ungloved, if you're if you go to do a push cut, your thumb's either going to end up here or here, depending on your hand size. Mm -hmm. Just organically putting it in my hand, I'm getting the last knuckle of that jimping right in the crook of my thumb, right. and that is not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But with a glove, you feel none of that. Yeah. And Let me see what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, just, uh, that's just my hand size, I suspect. I, Potentially. I, I'm not sure if... Uh, if I go here, I can feel it. Yeah. But yeah. here, it's... So yeah, you're, you're and, putting your thumb in a different position than me uh, as well. I'm just going to jump back to the spine for a second, and yes, they are definitely fairly aggressive, jumping along the back spine for texture, but... I find it's actually partially intentional for the design and fall. It, it it's a yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's nice. Honestly, even on the yeah. poly on this one, the side texturing with mm -hmm. the, the X pattern or the arrow pattern that they have on the side of it really even blends well with the backspacer. Like the yeah. whole design of that knife. Um, Very nice. And, and accordingly with the aluminum hand of one, I think the green is a lot smoother, but then it's got the more of the fuller blood groove, whatever type of thing. And that knife really, really uh, excels in its own way in a completely different mm -hmm. way than the EDC version yeah. or the moose handle. Cause there's a Tanto version an EDC black one. Yeah. 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 As far as the home front ones, they've got the original sort of classic. They've got an EDC, a hunter and a tactical version. Tactical is half serrated with a Tanto. Yeah. Hunter version is a camel handle with the moose hunter shape. And I actually would really like to see the, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the Hunter one. I think it appeals to me with the Ness Mucky type of yeah, style. Yeah, I, it, I really right? am intrigued by the hand or the, the blade of the Moose Hunter, Hunter version of the home front. I find it so silly putting camel handles yeah, on hunting tacky. knife. Yeah, it's yeah. tacky putting camel <laughs> handles on, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but we were just here last week complaining about orange on hunting knives, so... I wasn't complaining about oh, yeah. orange on a hunting oh, yeah. knife. I was complaining about it using it as a EDC in the city with oranges yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. that was the complaint. Yeah. <laughs> so giggity with the U. Um, <laughs> we were talking about ergos. Okay. We pretty much summed up the home front. Uh, speaking of variations. Yes, variations of the home front, right? Yeah. Well, aside from the uh, variations of the home front that we had mentioned, there are a couple other versions of knives that CRKT has come out with this year with the field strip technology yes. in them. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, one of them being James Williams' design. Um, yeah, and I'm interested to see what his pivot looks like. Yeah. Just because I was thinking about that earlier. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't actually have access to those other two versions that they have come out with. Um, one was, as Dennis mentioned, the James Williams design with straight up CRKT. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, it was the Gokun. The Gokun? Go Gokun? G O K E N. Gokun. 
Go Ken. Go Ken. Go Ken. Go. Um, yeah. no. So we'll put the Go Ken. Yeah. Uh, Oz A with G10, I believe, mm-hmm. for the handle. The price point, of, again, very questionable for CRKT. $149 for AUS8 with G10 handles. Um, we, oh, thank you. We've had yeah. them rake. Uh, I'll call them rake, rook, rake. Yeah. Ruiki. We've had them for. Forty-five to sixty-five dollars with superior yeah. materials, in my opinion, mm-hmm. with fourteen twenty-eight Sandvik and G10 for a third of the price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how you can justify that price point for uh, Mr. James Williams? Love your designs, man. As far as the slashing, the pokey factor, get a yep. name drop it twice in one episode, <laughs> just because so it's James Williams, movie. and when you're talking about yep. him, he does have a good pokey factor. And I mean, talking like hotspots to hotspots, the uh, Reich. Like rake, whatever it is Fruit. that Joseph mm-hmm. and I like, and oh, yeah. versus that, Everyone hates. I, they're all the same hot spots. They are. They're all the same. But that being said, <laughs> and right in clips, I t- I, t- I take uh, the rake over that. Oh yeah. Just for price point. Yes. I mean, yeah. if you're gonna <laughs> buy hot spots, I'd rather buy them for under a hundred dollars. If you're gonna buy hot spots. <laughs> And 1428 standard <laughs> instead of 4116 crew for yeah. again lesser price and equal, superior yeah. quality. You gotta step it up, guys. You gotta and step it up. Just to kind of say in my mind why they're trying to justify the price point, that right there, field strip technology. That is what you're paying for at that price point. You're paying for people with science goggles, uh, science goggles and lab coats. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if we're talking science goggles, they have the Taiwanese yes. made. They also have Chinese made. If you're talking Chinese made, like there's people that are producing stuff through Wii knives that are a lower price point than what you guys are offering for with S35 and like mm-hmm. yeah. maybe CRKT needs to outsource to Wii knives <laughs> in the yeah, Chinese. And also, find the, the William Boost Mini Arrow. Right around two times the price of that. Uh, That's not that much more, really. The mass drop stuff is yeah. unbelievable yeah. on what they're producing, right? Um, I don't know if we dabbled on Ergos too much about the Ace Boss, but no, we, we all love it. So I think the best. with this guy yeah. here, it yeah. was because we were biased. We were saving the best for last. It's a thumb hole, which, or a finger flicker, which yeah. no flipper wins points in my books, like, automatically. And so. surprisingly enough, it... It's just barely, barely a four-finger grip for me that it's still in that comfy range, and I still so, really like this guy as well. Barely a four-finger grip. What a what a mini grip Tillian does for me, Nigel does with the H. <laughs> so, and, and for uh, the two human-sized <laughs> hands here. Um, Paul does not have human-sized hands. He has carny hands. Carney, we <laughs> have carny hands. Second episode, Carney. Carney's a people, too. <laughs> How dare you? But you pay them less. <laughs> I think we're answering the accounts. But, I but for we're joking. <laughs> for <laughs> relatively <laughs> ordinarily <laughs> sized hands, um, <laughs> this is real comfy. Like my uh, my middle and ring finger do actually just tuck in on either side of that lump there. That's not common on a lot of the knives that go like hard for the let's try and mold it to someone's hands. A lot of them miss the factor. And yeah. less of a, a problem with the jibbing <laughs> on the liner lock. It's perfect. <laughs> Way less of a problem with the jibbing than here. And I mm-hmm. wonder if it's the mm-hmm. this finger choil where it locks you in there. And again, with the glove hand, that would be awesome for yeah. locking you in there. And it's also you, finer jibbing. That's uh, fairly broad and smooth. You're right. Mm-hmm. It is a wider jibbing. But then the open flow as well Man, lets mm-hmm. you find a comfortable yeah. yes. grip. And I'm going to say that just going back to the original intention and design of being based off of Ken Indian's military flipper, Ken Indian designed the field strip for military guys out in the field, the heavier glove. That's why the jimping's so rough and aggressive. I can't say for sure, but I'm fairly certain with the slicer grind and stuff like that, that uh, Vox Needs was more intending this as a everyone EDC. That's why the jimping's less aggressive. And being uh, Dutch, European, everyday carry, much mm-hmm. more conscious mm-hmm. in the European countries on what you're allowed to carry, this would probably be more of a an EDC type like, of yeah. aspect. You, you can imagine yeah. like slicing up some mushrooms or an apple or something with that. Mm-hmm. You can imagine... You know, like cutting zap straps with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stripping wire down yeah. or something, maybe for setting C4. Like, who uh, knows? America, Europe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Japan. <laughs> Hello, Japan, off there in the distance. Shoot, shoot your fucking <laughs> lightsaber. Pew, pew. Yeah. And that's right, shoot the lightsaber. It's all about shooting lightsabers. That's how you do it, right? Yeah, that's, I, I heard. In Are Tokyo, we nerd culturing now? Um, I want to reprofile 4106. I want to get a better idea of how yeah. it stands with a thinner, because apparently much more stable than some other steels. Uh, a thing I wanted to dabble on, this guy mm -hmm. here. Um, I'm going to call it out right now, and I don't know if Magic can find a picture. It's pretty easy, but the Microtech Sigil. And I don't know if you guys have seen that knife in any way, no, not but sure. there is a knife Microtech makes that I'm seriously questioning why Marfione is not suing people right now. <laughs> Give it time. Give it time. Well, it's been out for a year. He's I mean, just suing different people. Exactly. He's, yeah, he's in the middle. <laughs> he is in the middle, and he's finishing off with Kershaw, I think. That's kind of rounding out. But just to give you guys an idea, um, throw one up here. Here's one of the custom ones. I'm going to throw it on the phone just to give you a Google image type of idea. Um, oh, there we go. Right there. Um, yeah. Yes. Some Very similar. serious similarities between yep. some sigils. You're going to be the reason somebody gets sued. Uh, <laughs> I, Thanks for pointing it out. Mr. Haro, I like just your gonna design. Have like a censored bar. Can right I, I, can I in just walk away now <laughs> while the walk away in is good? And walk away in is now a verb as well. It's like a walkabout, <laughs> but <I> leaving. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I'd love to hear in the comments what people think about the Microtech or uh, how, because I don't I haven't heard much. Mm about the comparisons between the two, but as soon as I personally see the two, I'm like, holy... There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. Mm. That's scary close. Mm -hmm. like, and yeah, so just to kind of swing back around to the other um, field strip technology that Sierra 18 came out with was actually one of their Ruger lineup, and it was the RTD uh, designed by Matthew Lurch. Lurch. And yeah, I was commenting earlier when Nigel mentioned that to me before we started recording. He's the guy that did the enticer <laughs> for CRKT. He's done a couple probably designs for CRKT, I believe. Okay. Um, some of their, ig uh, what do they call their? Igniter. No, no, Igniter's oh. not his design. Right, right. Their that opening was system. System. Their um, outburst assist. Yes. Yeah. And he's the push down and then push out? Yeah, yeah, and his did a wheel, and it was kind of a nice <laughs> wheel. That as, just turned the wheel, and as you turned the wheel, the whole thing just kind of launched forward. It was nice. As far as a lefty, that was my favorite of that sort of mechanism that CRKT has come out with. Yeah. They also <laughs> came out with a very, very slim, skinny one called the uh, Delegate that also had mm. that wheel, and I enjoyed that little skinny guy, too. Anyway, back on to field strip. Matthew Lurch did the Ruger one. Again, mm. I'm curious about the pivot, just because yeah. I'm nerding out on that factor. There will be a picture. Um, I'm assuming like a Ruger. I'm guessing a Ruger or something. logo on it, just because it's the only yeah. one, and they're going to promote that. Yeah. I would love to see the star, just because Ken Yen is <laughs> like, it was mine. It was all mine. <laughs> That's what I do. This is what I do. I'm curious to see if it's going to be like designer by designer or knife by knife. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if it wasn't a Ruger logo, is it a Lurch logo? Yeah. On the other one, that's super curious too. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll kind of have to. Wait till next year to see if they come out with other designs by uh, the same designers with the field strip technology to see if it's different pivots, designer by designer. Field strip pillar. Yeah, that would be <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's necessary. I'd buy it. Okay, yeah. CRKT, I'm just saying right now, before you develop field strip, you better do something about what Steals. I'm cutting with. Yeah. Oh my God, where your development goes, it's it's got to be like pleading, begging, hands and knees. There's been people in the community that I've joked about there was rejoicing in the streets when they decided to use some 12C27 sandvig yeah. and a couple of their knives this year. And I mean, really, so, if they stepped up their game, you'd pay more, right? Or you, well, well, not for these specifically. I like I kind, of put, like I kind of put it up earlier in the video, though. Is, we already are. No, no, I want them to stop a year or two with the, the new models from the fancy designers and whatnots like that. So we can take a break from paying the designer tax mm. and pay a steel tax. So and if, keep the same price points, 
but get better steals. So if you did an elite series or a reserve series or mm. a special fancies, you would ha- already have the designs. Yeah. You I mean, wouldn't have to yeah. pay all these awesome designers. Don't get me wrong. Awesome designers. Mm-hmm. And they should definitely doing. be paid. Yeah. And but like you, I, I respect CRKT so much for paying these people to yeah. make phenomenal lives. Like the pillar, that that's kind of my like true love with and, CRKT. Basically. And we're not talking about the James Williams and we're not but, talking about the Brian Tynes, but they've yeah. got some solid, they, solid stables. Flavio and you, like, we yeah. haven't even mentioned Flavio. Like, like come on, for your first knife, exist. if you get mm. to buy a knife from one of those designers and it has to be from CRKT because you only have like 40 or 50 bucks to throw at it, yeah. it's, it's, hard, it's really hard to argue It's been hard that. not to buy this knife because of that. Yeah. yeah. Rather than taking on a whole bunch of young guys, and we love the fact that you're giving them a chance, but give the guys that are world famous in your catalog a reserve series, I'm telling you the community would eat it up. <coughs> if you put something out that was on a blur, a knockout, like high-end Kershaw, yeah. ZT level, and leaks and stuff like introductory, yeah. benchmade level, if you put something out like that, we would pay money for it and we would cheer. We would totally That's, that's have... four guaranteed sales at this table and <laughs> yeah. five because we all know Joseph would buy one too. Yeah, I I'm sure if you did an upgrade in the steels that you would barely be able to keep them on the shelves. Like, they are definitely desired for in the community. And I think the answer is a new division. I don't think Mm -hmm. the answer is CRKT stepping it up. They could, and I would love them for it. But you can keep these guys as being the big box store brand, and the 55 Mm -hmm. to 57 croup for an everyday Joe is going to be awesome. Yeah, go into Canadian Tire, buy a knife. But the reason that knife companies exist and fancy designers exist is for the community that we have Mm -hmm. and for the community that we all exist in and the community of all the people we talk to on a day-to-day basis scream for something better right so give us your equivalent of the chai chung factory that's all we ask yeah (laughs) until we all american or actually american for that matter yeah (laughs) would be a nice thing introductory knives though yeah Got a pretty good CRKT. Yep. Before we, we close they it out. They are wonderful for what they are. If you want to get into, I want to step up from a gas station knife, a Smith & Wesson knife, a Schrader yeah. knife, uh, a, yeah, whatever it may be, not knocking because whatever. They are what they are. Yep. But if you want to get into uh, Kershaw and CRKT are two brands that we can solidly recommend for, uh, you will be impressed. I know guys with a $50 pillar that have been blown away by they've never used anything this nice in their, uh, nice in their life. Um, so, and, highly recommend it. And, and not to mention the fact, because of their catalog of amazing designers, you get to handle a, like a, a Vox Nays knife without spending money on giant mouse. Yeah. Giant mouse or Fox knives yeah. or Viper knives. And I would like to see some of those personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate that you can get an offering from exactly. CRKT with what they've yeah. got. Yeah. And that is wonderful that CRKT is such a door opener into the knife world for as far as, like Dennis was saying, it's the the next step up from the gas station specials and stuff. And it's such a wide array of designers and different designs and stuff that it is such a good starting point for sure if you're getting into the knife world. If you pick up an M16, you won't be disappointed. No. If you've never had anything on the M16 frontline or the M21 frontline and you pick one up, that is going to easily <coughs> step up the bar on the best knife you ever own. Mm-hmm. And it's not my favorite knife in the CRKT catalog, but Kit Carson had a winning design and that has set the bar on what makes or breaks a CRKT knife? Is yeah. it better or worse than, than an M16? You add in the sand to that. And yeah. How do you go wrong? Or yeah. the minimalist. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to spend 20 or 30 bucks on like a tiny belt knife or neck knife or something? It's it's not amazing, but the design is. Mm-hmm. And I, I got to complain I, about Seal Trace again. But yeah, well, yeah. Three, three, years, three CR13 MOV is not amazing. Oh. But I have abused it. And it stood up to it, and I had, have to give it props for they that. They had variations that were 5 CR 15 <laughs> MOVs. I did not have one. 5 CR. I think I had five. But right. no, I, 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 I worked, I worked construction well. for a little over a year, and I had that on my belt every single day of it, and it survived. Nice. I mean, the tips kind of shaped like yeah. that now, but it survived, and it did right by we me. We didn't and get I into my curb steel with the spikes about how the bed tips and how disappointed I am for being spike steels about how disappointed I was on the croup and the bed tips with the spikes. Well, um, yeah. But that's kind of what I'm talking about right now. So I guess we did tell <laughs> a little bit. But yeah, for croup steel, it's uh, again with the, the bed factor and the soccer steels. But yeah. um, mm. anyway, uh, I think that rounds it out. We like the field strip. I think it's awesome that CRKT employed it. Yeah. 
if Ken Onion sold it to other companies, I think they could do much better jobs or keep it for CRKT and, again, make that elite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's all dependent on whether or not he has rights to it. Like yeah. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of rounding it out, I'm going to jump in and say thank you very much to The Cutting Edge for giving us this chance and donating these knives for us to review and showcase to you guys here. Yeah, Cutting Edge, they're doing an awesome job letting us uh, take things for review, things that we don't have in our personal collections, mm -hmm. things that we want to show you guys as far as a nice range of videos and, and dabbling on not just the Benchmade fanboy that I have <laughs> every week after week, we'll do a Benchmade video. Oh my god, you, you <laughs> um, get so sick and tired if all we did was go through Dennis's Benchmade stuff, it would be so <laughs> redundant. There's not like not three or four people that contest. would just drool as much as I do, and then there was, That's me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I love the fact that we can do a field strip. I love the fact mm. that we can do things out of our ball range and give an honest opinion of what we all think of, of mm -hmm. exactly what they are, right? So again, yeah. Cutting Edge Cutlery Co., um, thank They're you again. Guys. Yeah, a Canadian company, Canadian owned, uh, Canadian run, um, doing a fantastic job. Yeah. So. For sure. All right, signing off. Yeah, I think that's about all we have to say on these guys. Definitely check them out. Uh, I am Nigel D. Smith saying that is all for now. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. I'm Morgan at Stanoa. And I am XL.ca. Excellent. We'll see you next time we post a video. Have a good night, folks. Thanks, guys.